have the stands. Welcome back to Bizarre Podcast, Dogs Must Die. My name is Grant, you can call him Chip, and we are continuing to watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Stardust Crusaders, episodes 34 and 35 today, the Darby the Gambler fight. Fight? Eh, fight. Something. It's it's something. Confrontation. <laughs> yes, yes, it's a confrontation. <laughs> So this is one you've been excited to get to. Oh, yeah. It's been long enough since I've seen it that I couldn't remember if it's genuinely a good one or if it just has a lot of stuff that sticks in my mind really good. And this is one that a lot of people have been telling me, oh, I can't wait till you get to, to that one. Yeah. Uh, uh, or, I mean, this is one of the few stand fights that made it into the, the initial OVA run. Mm -hmm. Got expectations, man. Expectations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So let's start with episode 34, Darby the Gambler, part one. Our narrator kicks off by giving us the riddle of the Sphinx, because he just really wants someone to talk back for once. He's lonely. <laughs> if he asks a question, you have to talk to him. It still hasn't happened as far as all the way up to the end of part five, but I just keep feeling that one day that narrator is just going to turn out to be a real guy, and he's just been <laughs> behind the camera the whole time. Yeah, he closes the storybook and, and steps out, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's like his stand has something to do with narration. But of course, the riddle of the Sphinx was used to present the Sphinx. We have arrived at Giza on the, the outskirts of Cairo itself. Uh, although the riddle is from the story of Oedipus, so a Greek Sphinx. Uh, mm. And the Sphinx at Giza is at least 2,000 years older than Sophocles' play Oedipus Rex. But that's okay. It's fine. It's fine. fine. <laughs> God, imagine the narrator stopping the show for a full minute to explain that bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the narrator, you know, they, they're looking out towards Cairo from, from where they're standing. They're going to be searching, like, meticulously for Dio's hideout from the outside, like, spiraling into the center of, of, of Cairo. Mm -hmm. The narrator pops in one more time to present, kind of recapping the whole go goal of the story where they're they're at right now, and... <laughs> Going, well, before they reach Dio, they've got many more sphinxes <laughs> to, uh, mm -hmm. to tackle. And it's none of these guys have got riddles so far, I think. Well, no, no. But I do like the metaphor, honestly. Yeah. Like a, the sphinx as a symbol of their journey, you know, a series of deadly puzzles to solve. You yeah. figure out the trick or you die. <laughs> yeah. It just feels like at this point, I'm shocked there hasn't been a literal guy with a stand who just does Sphinx riddles, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we, we get there, and uh, they, they announce, we're finally here, and everyone makes a very serious face, except Iggy. I don't know if that's Iggy's serious face. It might be his <laughs> bored face. <laughs> it's probably his bored. It's probably his hungry face. He's hungry. <laughs> So they are once again at an open air cafe, a, a cafe that's basically a, a big pavilion uh, mm. with the, the bar in the center. Uh, and so they, they ask the bartender, hey, you're a bartender. Those people tend to know things. Have you seen this building? And so he's like, so you know about how bartenders know things, but you must also know that they only say things after you are a paying customer. <laughs> So they all order iced teas and drink them in perfect unison. <laughs> oh, yeah. And while they're doing this, they've already been searching for a little while and just coming up with nothing. They they all have such a super serious grim look on their face that they just have pure black hard shadows over their eyes. Mm -hmm. They're they're sweating a whole lot. Yeah, they they seem exhausted and frustrated. And that iced tea didn't put a dent in that at all. No matter how brisk the tea is, it, it will not snap them out of it. Yeah. Joseph has made multiple copies of the photo of the building. He just, he just keeps karate chopping more and more cameras. <clears throat> and they're they're passing the photos around to the rest of the customers at this cafe. They're all getting a look at it. We, we get another quick little cutaway of how Holly is doing. Not good? Not good. Not, not great. Good. No. So yeah, they're, they're getting real worried. They're still just coming up with not even any, like, real leads of, of any type. No one else in the cafe is seen, so they collect their photos, and they're about to just leave. But there's one guy <gasps> sitting in the back who has cyber cheeks. Oh, yeah. I... <laughs> what is his face? So, to describe this, this man, he just looks like he's a car dealer at a casino. Arm garters, the vest, yeah. everything. He's got a little uh, mustache. But yeah, the whole side of his face, just the cheeks all the way down. It's like he's got cyber sideburns 
<laughs> sideburns. Because uh, it's like a pale kind of light blue with horizontal lines going across them. And I don't know what... They look metallic, maybe? I don't mm-hmm, know what mm-hmm. it is. Would you be surprised to learn the animators also did not know what it was? <laughs> I, I color it blue, I guess. I don't know. God, yeah, in the manga, it's just he's just got some extra lines on his face for some reason. <laughs> I mean, it's a very distinctive character element. It's very memorable, but yeah, just no idea what it is. Makeup? So he he is sitting and beckoning them like, hey, I you want to know? I know some things about that building. And no one is picking up on this immediate, powerful enemy stand user vibe. <laughs> they do not get it. Yeah. He keeps, like, hinting and insinuating that he is willing to exchange the information they want. Uh, uh, like, they, they can win it in a wager because he's a gambling man. And he keeps mm. talking about how, you know, he's a gambling man who likes to bet. And he knows things you want to know. And Joseph's like, you got to lay out to me straight. I'm a fussy old man. <laughs> yeah. I do not understand implication. It's not my thing. And the whole time, you know, Darby is insinuating this stuff from here on out through this the rest of this two-parter you either get normal looking animation or you get incredibly lavish rotoscoped animation of cool card tricks (laughs) yes yes uh because that's how darby like emotes basically Mm -hmm. uh and it's great yeah he he just lays it out for joseph who's just like i'm not sure i know what you mean (laughs) (laughs) and like he's just trying to pay money like here's 10 yes. here's 10 pounds okay i really don't have time to gamble here's another 20 pounds can you yeah. just tell us where this building is or give please, us please w- please we just we gotta go this lady's gonna die and you know no it's this guy he he lives to gamble that this is the only way he he operates the only way he'll uh give out this info and so he goes okay here's a wager for example look outside look at that little cat walking around that that wall over there and he just throws out two pieces of dried fish and, hey, let's bet on which piece of dried fish the cat will go for first. And Joseph is still confused because he doesn't understand why someone would just feed a cat without, like, kicking it or something first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Completely foreign idea. And yeah, so Polnareff takes the bait. Well, before he does that, he just gets mad and, go- and just pounds on the table and says, just take the 30 pounds, dipshit. And <laughs> Joseph grabs him like he's his grandchild and mm-hmm. just says, that's not how you ask a person for a favor. <laughs> I Be mean, nicer. it's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Polnareff just goes fucking fine. You know, I bet that the cat is going to take the right piece because it's bigger. Why mm-hmm, wouldn't the cat mm-hmm. go for the bigger, tastier bit of fish? And as he's doing this, Abdul walks over to Jotaro, who's hanging out further in the bank, goes like, I'm pretty sure this guy's a, guy's an enemy stand user. <laughs> like, yeah, this dude's a creep. If if he twitches, you should punch his face off his skull. Yeah, Just yeah. He, like... <laughs> yeah, he immediately says, like, does anything weird. Just annihilate this dude. <laughs> Just deck this guy across the skull. Uh, so the cat notices the fish. It jumps down. It's going straight toward that slightly larger piece on the right. And then at the last moment, it zigs left, grabs that one first, then the right, and runs off with both of them. Ba yeah. ba ba. At, but right before they, the, you know, the cat does this, they they make a wager. It's just like, okay, if Polnareff wins, you got to tell me, you know, where th- this building is, what you know about it. Th- th- this gambler guy, Darby goes, okay, well, you got to wager something, too. How about you wager your soul? And everyone <laughs> thinks he's joking. He's not joking, folks. This is not a joke. Oh, no. no, no, no. So, yeah, the, the cat uh, runs off with both fish, starting with the left. So Darby wins. And that is when Polnareff's soul leaves his body. <laughs> mm-hmm. The, yeah, Darby is explaining ominously, like, I wasn't joking about that shit. I'm a bad guy. I have a bad guy enemy stand, you fools. And yeah, <laughs> Polnareff's eyes roll up into the back of his head. His body goes limp, his soul. A little white ghost of Polnareff yeah. is lifted out in the muscly arms of the, this <laughs> stand, uh, who, who we'll get the name of in just a second. He, Because my brain is broken, I'm like, oh, a green muscly Duros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His arms are very veiny, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're gross. The the stand works out. His fingers, the tips of his fingers are like suction cups. Yeah, it's cool. 
And so when he grabs Polnareff's soul, he doesn't, like, eat him or, or anything like that. Instead, he starts squishing and pulling and stretching and kneading Polnareff's soul like it's made out of dough. Some sort and, of soul putty. Yeah, and then soul putty. And slaps his hands together and reveals Polnareff has been transformed into a poker chip. <laughs> yeah. Poker chip with his, like, sad little face on it. Like, his <laughs> yeah, eyes closed, yeah, yeah. looking very defeated. <laughs> I mean, this might be better than hell. I don't know what the experience is like, but it could yeah. be a better place for Polnareff's soul to go than it was headed naturally. Yeah, maybe it just feels like being dead <laughs> th than being in hell. Polnareff's body is technically alive, but like not breathing, so that's not good. Yeah, and this is where Darby finally introduces himself. He spells out his name. He makes sure to, to point out there's an apostrophe after the D. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And his stand is named Osiris. Uh, yep. With three in a row, I can confidently say it's just landscape art now. That's that's the thing. Yep. Yeah. Osiris is the god of fertility, agriculture, the afterlife, the dead, resurrection, life, and vegetation. He's depicted <laughs> as a guy with green skin, uh, mummy wrappings over his lower body, holding a crook and flail that eventually became symbols of kingship as seen on King Tut's tomb. Not much about gambling, though, or anything no, like that. No, no, but death and resurrection, I mean... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, half of the the Egyptian gods seem to, to have something to do with death and, and new life, but, like, Osiris was actually resurrected, so there you go. Yeah. While Darby is named for Terence Trent Darby, and voiced in the English dub by Cam Clark. Oh, fuck! I didn't realize! Liquid Snake himself has joined the party. I got this episode up right now. I just gotta listen to this for a second. <laughs> okay. Open the game. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> that's good. It, it is interesting as we go farther, like, we've kind of run out. Okay, we haven't run out, but we're getting less of the, the English-speaking guitar boys of the 70s and 80s. There's yeah. a lot more R&B in Stardust Crusaders than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. Wishing Well, it's a good song. Check it out. Yeah, and it's it'll be interesting when we get to the further parts, too, because you start getting more and more like contemporary artists from the time the manga was being written. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, at some point you're going to get a red hot chili pepper. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, while Darby is introducing himself and his stand, the cat that grabbed the, the fish runs up to him and crawls up onto his shoulders because that's his cat. <laughs> yes, yes. And everybody screams at him for, for cheating. That's unfair. And he declares something that is absurdly false. <laughs> It's not cheating if you don't know it. <laughs> yeah, if you don't get caught, nobody knows, then... No, it's cheating. It's cheating. Even <laughs> it's if he knew cheating. for sure it was your cat, even then, that would be cheating. He would know you're cheating and not take the bet, maybe, but it would still be cheating. So Abdal gets super pissed off, grabs Darby by the neck, and is just gonna kill him. Mm -hmm, He's just gonna mm -hmm. kill the shit out of him. Darby stops him and goes like, whoa, 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 hey, if you kill me... Anyone I've turned into a poker chip stays that way. They're just dead. And uh, he illustrates one of his other talents, his incredible memory for his, his uh, bets by talking about the person whose soul he claimed on September 22nd, 1984. Yeah, 11.15 p.m. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we get a little flashback, him playing this game against this like biker looking dude at a bar, and he opens up his coin collection or trapper keeper where he keeps all of his uh his poker chips of people he's won against yeah not only got that guy but also his dad and his wife yeah i love so he's got like these little little name tags under each poker chip to keep track of who they are and yeah so there's stephen moore the guy he brought up and then his dad below him which doesn't say his dad's name it says daddy moore <laughs> <laughs> Well, they weren't formally introduced, you see. Uh, that's true. Yeah, because like his mom just says Mrs. Moore, but no, dad is Daddy Moore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you go a few pages further back, he's got a, a complete set of all the state quarters. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly what this, this folder looks like. September 22nd, 1984 is also the day that Michael Eisner became chairman and CEO of the Disney Corporation oh. following Frank Wells' death. Huh. Yeah. 
when Darby first brings up that date, it's so specific, and he like names the guy he was going up against. I was like, wait, is this like some weird historical event Iraqis rewriting for this guy? <laughs> but no, it's it's. I don't nobody. think so. No, no. Yeah. But basically, yeah, you, you you gamble to to win souls or lose souls. This is essentially a Twilight Zone episode. Yes. It might be at least four Twilight Zone episodes. Yes. <laughs> it's not so different from, you know, a, a pitch for the angels. Yeah, the, it won't happen too many more times, I think, in Stardust Crusaders. But there are later JoJo parts where a lot of the episodes just start to feel more and more like twilight zone episodes like there's a fight in it but the fight is so conceptual and less punchy that it's just twilight zone every every episode <laughs> it's pretty cool though we we finished act one essentially uh the the stakes are set the mechanics are there our heroes have to find a way to out gamble this expert gambler who will bet mm. on anything in order to to win back Polnareff's soul and hopefully uh, any sort of secrets uh, he may hold. Yeah. Darby starts chewing on a big chunk of chocolate as Joseph, looking real serious, he just fucking bats everything off of this table, mm-hmm. uh, slams a glass down in the middle of the table, pulls out. Uh, some liquor and just pours it all the way up until it hits the very top of the glass so that the surface tension is just barely keeping the 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 liquor from pouring over the edges if this was a cup filling contest he would have already won yeah incredible skills what if joseph immediately just went i bet i could fill this up all the way to the tippy top without <laughs> yeah <laughs> without spilling it damn i won there okay bye no it's this is a a trick that Joseph Joestar apparently has known for a long time, and he is an expert of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He, so Joseph is setting up the rules for the bet. He's in control this time. Got the liquor all the way up to the top, and he's got a whole bunch of coins. And yes. they're going to take turns dropping coins into this glass, and whoever makes the liquor spill loses. Yeah, yeah, it's it's alcohol Jenga. Yeah. So then we get our, our uh, commercial break mid-card, uh, I love the art of Osiris, the Osiris stand. <laughs> yes. It's 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 handsome Squidward lunging at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's clapping at you. <laughs> Poker chips. I love that despite, technically Osiris is a really uh, powerful stand if you're bad at gambling. So all of his stats are just absolute shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're all E's and D's. <laughs> Uh, stats are meaningless. Why, why do yeah, we have them? I love it. I love it. Back in the action, it is time for, for Joseph to bet his soul, which I don't know if he can do. I'm pretty sure there's a lean on his soul of some kind. <laughs> I bet he got his soul wrapped up in some kind of reverse mortgage scheme. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So Abdul is freaking out going, jo- yo, Joseph, you cannot do this. But no, Joseph's super confident in, in this thing. He's telling everybody... Like, okay, Jotaro, try to keep an eye on Darby here. Make sure he doesn't cheat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Darby goes, hey, since you're the one who set this whole thing up, can I inspect everything to make sure that it's fair? So he's checking out the glass. He's looking at it from different angles. He's feeling the coins and all Mm -hmm, this shit. mm -hmm. Joseph asking Darby, what type of guarantee do I have that you're not, you know, actually going to give us Polnareff back? Or tell us yeah. anything. And it's just gambler's honor. That thing that he's famously uh, uh, shown through this entire <laughs> encounter. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, Joseph is still confident. Like, what did we learn in the very first episode of Stardust Crusaders? We learned that you win by defining the win condition. Joseph mm-hmm. is in a solid position. Yeah. This is where he's thinking about how this this whole trick is his specialty he he knows he has a pretty good idea of exactly how many coins can go into the glass it's eight or nine coins so mm-hmm. as long as his hands aren't too shaky he'll be able to to pull it off so darby goes okay i'm gonna drop in five coins at once <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of what i was talking about in in the geb fight how uh, uh because danger can be anywhere it's communicated through like framing and editing and music yeah. cues and like th- this is the same thing it's, it's not like the most terrifying canteen it's just like using those same techniques to ramp up the the very the, the most mundane activity we've <laughs> ever seen yeah, yeah but still has this incredible weight from its presentation and the stakes we could lose the soul of joseph joestar to this man yeah 
if if you're listening to this and you you watch this episode afterwards and you really like it and you want more of that there is an anime that's just this every episode and it's called kaiji it's <laughs> yes yes th- this is kind of a kaiji style episode where it's just like okay kaiji is the 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 anime where very early on there is extreme go fish where you might fucking die if you do bad at go fish <laughs> like it's stuff like that and it rules <laughs> I I am aware of gambling anime being a whole genre unto itself. I have not seen any of it. But, like, this lines up with, you know, that that secondhand stuff uh, uh, I have heard, yes. Yeah, it's the the incredible tension from such a mundane, just boring, like, game of chance. (laughs) Like, this is, honestly, from the direction, at least so far, probably the most tense two episodes. Absolutely, absolutely. (laughs) That show is so dumb, but it pulls it off so good. And uh, (laughs) it's a great anime to watch if you're feeling like watching something that uh, hates capitalism a whole lot. (laughs) That's basically what Kaiji is about. So yeah, Darby's going in very slowly with this stack of five coins. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, he's a master. He, he's he got a super steady hand. He's able to drop all five coins in. The liquor is shaking a whole lot, but it doesn't spill. There's a really good quick shot of Darby like close up of his face extreme close up where he just let he just goes like oh because like he was holding his breath for so long yes this, the, yes this sigh of relief i love i love that gasp because it would be so easy to make darby just absolutely cool rock solid but no he knows he is taking risks like he yeah. is he is chasing the the adrenaline rush of the bet he's confident he's got tricks up his sleeves all the time he's incredibly prepared but that doesn't mean he, he isn't aware of inherent risk all the same it's such a quick cut it's like a quarter second of him but it is so perfect but it's the best it's the best part yeah so now it is joseph's turn uh we're a lot farther in the game than he expected to be uh i I guess not a lot of people drop multi coins whenever he's scamming them (laughs) this is how he nailed so many like business deals in manhattan he's he's just like making bets against rubes (laughs) yeah so so joseph does what he does a little bit of sleight of hand Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get we get a little bit of, bit of that more that classic Joseph stuff going on. So the trick here is that he has a little bit of not even a whole cotton ball, just like rip the top off a Q-tip, basically, and that is acting as a sponge to hold like extra scotch that mm-hmm. he's going to squeeze in with his coin to to juice it even farther and make sure that it's impossible to add even one more coin. Yeah. I I also really appreciate how this episode puts, like, table gambling, like, we're going to get to a card game eventually, obviously. Oh, yeah. Dude's been shuffling cards this whole time. It's his fidget. Uh, uh, But, but, like, that sort of cards and chips, you know, gambling games and sleight of hand magic are are perfect bedfellows. They go hand in hand. Like, Mm -hmm. all the cards and the small objects and people right up close. Close Close-up magic, of course. The dessert of magic. (laughs) <laughs> yum there's even chocolate involved this is the dessert of magic there is chocolate involved in this yeah yeah joseph squeeze squeezes that little bit of extra scotch or whatever in there drops the coin in darby does not notice you know what he has done here joseph just says okay your turn obi and darby gets super pissed off grabs him by the arm he, it's you know my fucking name is darby don't make me say it again did, did we miss when he first called him barbie because i think barbie I think comes so. before obi so yeah, yeah i think joseph's been trying to get under this guy's skin with the uh, the name teasing i guess for a while <laughs> Yeah, just trying to throw throw this guy off. It's part of his strategy. If if you're aggravated, then your hands aren't going to be as steady. Mm-hmm. So now it's it's Darby's turn. He's he's sweating. He looks nervous. He he's how is on this the... chocolate bar not melting? <laughs> the yeah, the sun cho- is so bright. <laughs> yeah, he's he's chomping on this chocolate bar nervously. He gets up. And goes to a different side of the table and says, okay, the, you know, the sun is kind of reflecting off the glass from where I'm sitting. I want to drop the coin in from here so I can see better. And Joseph's mm-hmm. just like, you know, I don't care. Do whatever you want. He'll, he'll let him have this. What difference does the sun make? Yeah. Joseph is confident that the glass is already at its its limit. Darby gets ready to drop the coin in and goes, aha, you think this glass is already at its limit. Don't, I, I bet you're wrong. I know one more coin can fit in here. And he just drops the coin in. 
It just goes in clean. Everyone is shocked. It's amazing. <laughs> That the colors get all crazy and inverted for for this part to to show off Joseph's shock. He gets the blonde beard yeah. that he has in the OVA. Yeah, which I wonder if that's intentional or not. It could be. I I would like to think so. Yeah, why not? Yeah. So now it's Joseph's turn again, and he was sure that the last coin would be the coin to lose, but now now his turn must be the one to lose. There's no way around it. Yep. I think there's a way around it. <laughs> you just use the same cotton ball trick to pull liquid out instead of putting liquid mm-hmm. in. So something I also wondered, like there, there's an alternate thing they could have done here because this is just using drink glasses. And we've seen this happen multiple times with Joseph. What if he had used his hormone to cheat? <laughs> <laughs> it's not cheating if you don't know. <laughs> Yeah. None of these stand users probably know fucking shit about Hamon or that it even exists. Like, Joseph could pull out this old trick and just channel it through the glass and, like, keep the the water. Because remember, he even had to learn how to hold a glass upside down and keep the water inside. Yes. Yes. And option number three, although this one is unsustainable, uh, they even mention while he's taking this long, long pause, you know, uh, uh, struck and, like, unable to act. Someone asks if he's waiting for uh, some to evaporate off to make space in the glass. Like, yeah, <laughs> yes. that's a plan. It's a plan yeah. that works for both of them. And this game never ends. It just continues forever. <laughs> but it's a plan. Yeah. So, yeah, jo- Joseph is just really freaked out. He's super nervous. He's sweating. He's, he's shaking. You get a very long protracted sequence of Joseph's shaky hand, like the coin descending slowly, him looking at the glass from different angles It goes back and forth to these couple different angles several times for what feels like an eternity. After like 30 seconds of this, before he can even drop the coin, his soul just jumps out of his body. (laughs) I love that we can say that literally. Yeah. (laughs) Darby explains that Joseph knew in his heart of hearts that he had already lost. And if Mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. you, you, you feel so utterly defeated that even if you don't feel the like requirements of losing the game... If you just admit to yourself that you've lost, your soul will just come out of your body. Yeah, that that will weaken your soul just as much so that it can be seized by, by Osiris yeah. and slapped into a tiny little poker chip. Yeah, uh, and as Joseph's like soul <laughs> face is getting needed, he's shedding a single tear and he just says, Polnareff, forgive me, as he gets smacked into a coin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Polnareff and, and uh, Joseph's co- chips are different denominations. Uh, mm-hmm. Joseph is worth $5 and Polnareff 10 Wow. So uh, update your rankings uh, accordingly, <laughs> I guess. But yeah. I, I think what really got uh, Joseph in the end wasn't, you know, the impossibility of the task. It was that, that Darby's cool overwhelmed him. He could not, he was spending so much time trying to figure out what the trick is. Yeah. And, and he couldn't, you know, get through uh, uh, Darby's exterior that he, he second guessed himself and it was so inside his own head, he couldn't even think about his own tricks. Yeah. Right after this happens, some of the liquor spills out over the side of, of the glass. Mm-hmm. This got established earlier, actually. Uh, Joseph asked Jotaro to use Star Platinum to keep an eye on Darby to make sure he wasn't doing anything. Right. You know, Jotaro thought Darby hadn't cheated at all. But what has happened here, Jotaro goes to inspect the glass. He picks it up, looks at, un, at the, uh, the underside of the glass, and there's some melted chocolate on the edge of it. Mm-hmm. And so Darby had pulled off some sleight of hand that somehow Jotaro missed, even with Star Platinum, to put a tiny little chunk of chocolate from his chocolate bar to tilt the glass just a tiny bit. And that bit earlier where he's like, ooh, the sun is reflecting off the glass. I got to move and drop the coin from a different angle. That was because he was blocking the sun from hitting the glass. And so when he moved, the sun started to melt the chocolate and would then tip the glass. So when Joseph is judging, you know, the the bulge of the the liquid coming up over the lip based on, you know, all of his experience playing this game, he's he was right that it, it was about to spill. But then once it goes level and evens out... Uh, mm-hmm. there, that's where that extra space came in. <laughs> yep. And so, yeah, they're, again, super pissed off that he cheated, but he's just like, I don't give a fuck, I won. Mm-hmm. Now, with basically half of the gang taken out because Iggy ain't doing shit this episode, <laughs> uh, Jotaro volunteers. It is now his turn to gamble and bet his soul. 
That investigation bit is so good, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, for one, helpful diagram. Always love it. And two, like, yeah, JoJo's whole Columbo thing. Coming back again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But but yes, uh, JoJo is stepping up to take the next bet. I'm a little surprised Avdol isn't taking a turn to ramp up the stakes. Yeah. I guess JoJo needs someone to talk to. And again, that ain't Iggy's job, so... <laughs> I do like the explanation we get a little bit later on in the, the following episode where Avdol just admits he has the world's worst poker face. <laughs> Which seems right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But that is the game. That That is the name of the game. JoJo's like, hey, let's play some, some poker. And that, um, there's so many ways to cheat, especially if you're doing shit like this chocolate trick. Like it's oh, yeah. Like it ain't no thing. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> And then he, he announces, and we're playing for keeps, which would be the perfect use of, like, the roundabout intro. But we're not doing oh, that man. anymore. Yeah. No. No. So that takes us to episode 35, Darby the Gambler, part two. You don't get any, you get a cold opening. We're, we're right into the poker game. Yeah. Like, the first line is demanding a shuffle. <laughs> and this is, this is where the really good, like, animation really kicks in of, like, mm-hmm, all these mm-hmm. nice rotoscoped hands cutting the deck shuffling it doing tricks and stuff and if you want to talk about close-up magic the dessert of magic uh the f- <laughs> jojo <laughs> asks darby to pick a card any card <laughs> yes he just picks a card and and then jojo just says i'll tell you what it is it's the six of hearts and it is and then he names the cards from the top in order five of spades queen of diamonds jack of spades ace of hearts so on and so forth and he names like the next 10 cards in order and they're all correct and he's just saying that's what my star platinum can do don't fuck with me (laughs) yeah yeah by precise observation of the cards as they flipped by in the shuffle star platinum has memorized the location of every card in the deck so Mm -hmm. yeah jojo insists that he cannot be cheated against even though darby has successfully cheated right in front of him twice so (laughs) yeah they both have reason to be confident yeah like sure the first time maybe jojo didn't think to look out for a cheater but that second time with the chocolate come on man should have seen that (laughs) meanwhile darby's like okay i'll just shuffle so that you know you can't see the cards as they flip by fine So they bust out one of those, uh, the one of the a, a new a new sealed deck of cards. So there's no way they could have been tampered with. Mm-hmm. Jojo even looks, uh, spreads out all the cards as they they come by. They're playing with one Joker in the deck. Mm-hmm. And there's there's this little bit here I really like that that's happening at the same time while Jojo's inspecting the cards. You can see there, there's a, a little like drink cart like serving cart next to darby he's got one hand to his side just flipping the pages through the book without looking at them and then he just stops at a random page without looking he guesses what what page number he's on and he's correct it's like 556 or something enough practice at something is eventually indistinguishable from a superpower yes we are establishing that darby has like a ricky j level of card control (laughs) yeah he he knows exact which exactly which page he's on by feel and therefore he could tell what cards are in the deck just by their feeling (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we we determine first deal through like drawing high card uh it's darby's deal so he begins to deal out a hand when suddenly his finger is snapped backwards (laughs) i love this bit yeah you know he's going (laughs) you know okay you know alternating between dealing a card to jojo and then himself and he's only gotten like two cards in where he's about to throw out a, th- a third card to JoJo. It's so lightning quick. that This episode does a really good job of actually selling how fast Star Platinum is. Yes, it's yes. Like, it's like two frames between Star Platinum not being there and Darby's index finger being bent clean backwards and almost torn off his, his hand. Because Star Platinum saw that Darby was doing a second deal, dealing not the top card, but the second card in order mm-hmm. to manipulate uh, the hands. And again, nobody could second deal like Ricky J. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how do we get past the, this impasse? Well, we need a, a neutral dealer, clearly. So JoJo spots a kid juggling a soccer ball on a hill, and it's like, hey... Hey, kid, you're the dealer. And that poor kid has no idea he's about to have the worst day of his life. (laughs) Yeah. So when the kid first starts dealing, 
Darby is talking about like mm, jo- Jojo. I bet you're you. I bet you're confident that you can win back your friend's souls, but I'm gonna t- claim yours or whatever. And Avdol just tells the kid, "I know this seems really scary, but just try to ignore it." <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a nice guy. He's he's looking out for the kid. Yeah. Of course, as this is a poker game, there's only so much, uh, uh, so much more of the skill is is in reading and playing your opponent than reading and playing your cards. Uh, yeah. So Darby tries by yet again mentioning one of his conquests. May seventeenth, mm-hmm. nineteen eighty six, he won another soul, which was also the date of the one hundred twelfth Preakness Stakes won by Snow Chief, who Darby hmm. probably bet on. He seems like the type. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he he's saying it's it hasn't been since he played against that guy uh, that he's felt like he's had to treat an opponent so seriously at gambling. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so, and he's saying like, okay, Jojo, you've got my full attention now to uh, put the stick, you know, increase the stakes. Like they need poker chips, and so uh, Osiris pops out, slams the table, sends both the the poker chip of Polnareff and. Uh, Joseph's soul and karate chops them a whole bunch until they turn into a big stack of their souls. Yes. <laughs> Multiple chips. Six apiece. To win an entire soul, you have to get each of the six parts. We, yep. We've turned uh, this poker game into some sort of JRPG fetch quest. <laughs> But Jojo also gets six blank chips representing his own soul. He is very mm-hmm. confident going into this game at a two to one chip disadvantage. That's very bad for strategic betting, but okay. Mm-hmm. While the narrator begins explaining some of the the necessary rules right. of poker, which we must be of which we must be aware, he's so glad to be needed. Uh, very very happy boy, the narrator today. Mm-hmm. So now we've got this little kid dealing. Mm-hmm. You know, we're we're getting turns of Darby and Jojo both have to throw one soul chip in to start here. Th- they're playing five card draw and yeah, uh, Jojo's yeah. like, uh, hey kid, give me three more cards. Jojo, you don't want three cards. You want to fold. <laughs> so yeah, the, the first round goes poorly for Jojo. Yeah, he comes up with two pair in the end after drawing three. That meant he was betting pretty heavy compared to his pot, at least. Like, he, he yeah. lost half of his soul based on a low pair at best. Yeah, Darby had two pair jacks and queens. Like, like he looks cool, but he is playing desperate. When you're at that sort of, like, chip deficit, you mm-hmm. can only afford to, to go in on hands where you actually have the cards. There's a really good shot and like animation here of Darby being really satisfied and like slamming his right arm down and scooping up all the chips he's won (laughs) across the table. It's a really good shot. But after uh, uh, Abdul once again like comforts this kid, like, don't worry, kid, you're going to see some real fucked up shit, but it's cool. It's cool. Don't worry. You're safe. You're safe. (laughs) I got you. You and me, bud, we're in this together. Oh, I should bring up uh, at the start of this poker game, Darby explains that, uh, you know, he's not flesh abutted and he doesn't care. He's not getting paid by Dio at all. He's simply working for Dio only because it gets him the most exciting gambling games. Yes. Yes. <laughs> he's, he's in it for the love of the game, man. You got to respect that. Yeah. So now the rest of this fight is essentially an Animaniacs bit. <laughs> Yeah. Jojo's strategy is to act so far outside his opponent's frame of reference that he loses his damn mind. Yeah, this bit is so fucking good. So yeah, Jojo's only got three chips left. And Five Darby, to one disadvantage. Yes. Yeah. And already uh, Darby, you know, w- w- with the hand he's been dealt, he's already got like three kings or something like that. Mm-hmm. Darby throws in another chip. And then it's Jojo's turn, and he's just sitting there. And, like, mm-hmm. the, the little kid dealer is looking at, at Jojo, and he's looking kind of worried. And Darby's just like, come on, Jojo, look at your hand. You got to decide whether you want to, you know, fold or, or whatever. And Jojo's just sitting there without ever touching the cards. It just scattered across the table. He hasn't looked at him. He just says, these cards are good. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Like this immediately throws Darby off. Like, did you what? What the fuck did you just say? Is and Joe just like with the like world's most impeccable poker face. He's just like, I'll play with his hand. These cards are good. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Like what? What the fuck? <laughs> uh, uh, 
jo- Jojo's in and Darby's like, uh, okay, you, if, if that's how it's going to be, I'll, I'll, I'll raise you. Oh, what? You can't raise? Cause you ain't got no chips. Avdol's okay, fine. Uh, you can use my soul. <laughs> yep. Jojo's got more chips now. He's got six of Avdol's soul. <laughs> I mean, he figures he's dead either way, right? Like, might as well experience life as a poker chip for a while. (laughs) Maybe that'll be fun. So, yeah, Jojo just slams this stack of Abdul's chips, soul chips down and pushes him forward. And this really freaks Darby out. He's like, what the fuck is this? And he starts sweating (laughs) and, like, shaking a little bit. Uh, he, he's, and, and Abdul like describes his faith in Jojo. He, he says, "quote My soul is in Jotaro's hands," which yeah. I'm adding to the shipping chart. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is where Darby or uh, Abdul says, "Like I couldn't do this shit. My face is like an open book. I'm like I I cannot gamble. This is why I just put my fate in Jojo's hands. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would immediately lose to Darby." So after that round of betting, of course, we are uh, uh, drawing our cards. Well, Darby is. And now Mm -hmm. he has four kings. The number of hands that Jojo could have to beat that are two. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. He could have four aces. To be dealt four aces straight out is a one in 54,145 chance. Yeah. Or he could have any straight flush, which is even rarer. Uh, that would happen uh, at random in one in every 64,974 oh deals <laughs> to just naturally get a straight flush. And on top of these impossible odds, we get it. We hear inside uh, the, the kid dealer, like we hear his thoughts, and it turns out he is also on the payroll of Darby, <laughs> and so is literally every single person in this cafe. <laughs> This kid is an expert dealer. He has purposefully been giving Jojo the worst hands possible. I guess Jojo's not a bad enough dude to snap a kid's fingers. <laughs> yeah. You know, Darby was freaked out for a second, but then he he collects himself because it's like, okay, I know this kid is dealing Jojo a really fucking bad hand. I've got, you know, four kings here. There's literally no way Jojo is just bluffing. He got me for a second, but I'm good. But just the, the reveal that not only the kid, but everyone in the cafe is on the take. I had to stop and laugh. I, had, I just <laughs> had to take a minute. Like, it's such a perfect escalation yes. of a way of cheating we saw him do. This is the cat thing, but yeah. bigger. Like, it's yeah. perfect. It's perfection. <laughs> Darby spent six months training yeah. an entire village to be perfect card cheats. Yeah. And then airlifted them into this Cairo cafe. <laughs> just so, that just so happened to be where the crew wanted their synchronized iced tea. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fucking good. So Darby has com- completely regained his confidence. He's cool and collected again. Darby raises the entirety of Joseph's soul. And mm-hmm. Abdul goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. Jo- you know, Jotaro can't, he has no more chips to bet. And Darby goes, "Uh uh-uh, my stand works with written binding contracts, too. The person doesn't even have to be here to bet their soul. So how about you bet Kakyoid's soul? (laughs) Notice that Jojo never considers betting Iggy's soul. Therefore, Jojo does not think that dogs have souls. Therefore, Jojo is Catholic. When I was re-watching these episodes, uh, Voidberg was also watching with with me, and she came to the same conclusion. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Therefore, you must consider Jojo describing his horrific violence in a confession booth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jojo just goes like, all right, uh, grabs that piece of paper, that little contract, and just immediately signs it. And it just reads like, I bet my friend Kakyoin's soul and just slams the chips down. That, again, freaks Darby out. Like, what the fuck? No one checks with Kakyoin. Yeah. Like... <laughs> wherever he is i guess he's on the road somewhere he's catching up uh, yeah uh, but you could just bet anybody's soul this way yeah like, if, if you don't, need, don't permission, need permission you could bet the bartender's soul you're like oh god damn it i should never have started working for this darby guy <laughs> yeah yeah jotaro slams down the, the stack of kakuin soul soul chips i love this really quick uh series of events you start off with a close-up of Darby's shocked face. It zooms out to like a fisheye lens so that the camera pulls back so that the, the chips are really big in front, in the foreground. 
And then it cuts to Jotaro signing the contract. And for like three frames, you can see Star Platinum standing next to Jojo and then disappearing. And Jojo is now smoking a cigarette. The cigarette is lit with the sound of a gunshot. Well, yeah, actually, yeah. He at first he just has the cigarette unlit, and then Star Platinum appears for a single frame again and lights it with a gun <laughs> with that gunshot. But but now I am seeing the underage smoking censorship for the first yes. time. This is new. Yep. I don't like this. It, yeah, you could barely tell what's happening with Jojo's face. It's just black. It's just completely in shadow, basically. So so now Darby is unsettled. Like he's seeing this demonstration of the, the speed and and deafness of Star Platinum and thinking, like, wait, could could he be cheating? Could, can he move that much faster than my eye that maybe he isn't holding the, the absolute trash that this kid has been dealing to him? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. May, maybe he's swapped the cards. Like even all of the cards, maybe. So Darby is thinking about all the hands he could have, like he swapped his cards five times without anybody noticing. And then like, oh, yeah, you, you are playing with the Joker. Never, never mind my math. It's actually much more likely uh, <laughs> that, that he got dealt a winning hand. We're talking maybe one in 40,000 deals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the The kid dealing the cards is also freaked out now and like. He is starting to sweat. He's got a real worried look on his face, and he just looks straight at Darby. And so Darby just like looks away to like, fuck it, don't look at me. It'll be really <laughs> obvious that we're cheating if you do that. Uh, and, and so when he composes himself a little bit again, he looks back and, you know, Jojo doesn't defeat all of his enemies with, with rapid punching. Sometimes mm-hmm. he destroys them with fruity tropical drinks. Yes. Yeah. He just... <laughs> Like, one frame, there isn't a drink there. The next frame, there's a fruity tropical drink right next to Jotaro. <laughs> and it's it's really funny. It looks almost like a pre-rendered CG thing. It really stands out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, Jotaro just starts drinking that. Like, again, the, the calmest, coolest poker face just drinking this drink. And Darby's composure gets broken again because this drink is suddenly here. So both of them are all in on their chips, but... Jojo still has a turn to raise if he so chooses. Darby's just say, okay, I'm all in. Let's show our cards. And right before he's able to do that, Jotaro interrupts him and says, I haven't raised the pot yet. And like in this really like the most badass shot, the thing, everyone's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, how uh, how can you fucking raise it anymore? And in like slow-mo, Jojo just has another stack of six white chips and slams them real hard on the table. All the other chips go flying, and he raises Darby his mom's soul. (laughs) Which, as he explains shortly, like, yeah, she's dead if they lose anyway, so, like, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. And so Darby now is at the deficit. He doesn't have anything to to match with until Mm -hmm. Jojo suggests, hey, you could tell me the secret of Dio's stand. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And, the, like, Darby just loses his shit. He falls backwards out of his chair. He is sweating profusely. He he He's breathing real heavy. Every, and everyone is, too. Like, you get shots of Abdul, the little kid. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. And someone says, judging by his reaction, he knows Dio's secret. Oh, you mean knocking over all the furniture and panting on the ground? <laughs> that reaction? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a pretty notable reaction. <laughs> You know, Abdul is is losing his shit as well. And he goes like, oh, my God, Jojo, you have to have a good hand, right? You wouldn't be doing this otherwise. <laughs> and Jojo just spits a cigarette out and, and starts yelling at Darby, like, are you going to fucking call? Or are you going to fold? What, what's it going to be, dude? And <laughs> Darby is slowly trying to get up. His legs are weak. He's struggling to get back to the table. He is aging 40 years. Yeah. In the... the- Time it takes to say one sentence. Yeah, his hair is starting to go gray. You know, he we're just hearing his thoughts. He isn't even able to vocalize anything. And he has to call. He ha- he has his gambler's honor. It is his duty to, like, do the, the only permissible move in a situation like this. He has to call and win. But he can't actually say the words. Like, and I'm sure... At this point, I don't know how JoJo is going to win because I'm sure yeah. that, you know, if I watch closely, Darby has looked away from the table at least yes. five times. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Star Platinum could have done it by now. God, yeah, an, an alternate victory where he just did that just freaked him out, so he ha- actually had the time to swap the cards. Yeah, that could work too. <laughs> But he he eventually sits up and he becomes this warpy, twitchy, sketchy Darby. He he looks like you know yes. Mob Psycho one hundred, uh, uh, yeah. just sitting there at the table. But like this is what happens when you you rule out of fear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If Dio wasn't so terrifying, if if the idea of giving up Dio's secret wasn't a fate a thousand times worse than death, then yeah. D- then Darby would have made the right play, would have done the sensible thing, and like there, <laughs> there's literally no way you have the cards to beat me. I call your soul is mine. But no, because Dio is so fucking terrifying. Even yeah. the tiniest, slimmest, like winning the lottery three weeks in a fucking row, slim odds. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Darby just passes out, like standing up. <laughs> he he, his eyes roll up at the back of his head. Like he's just drool is just dripping out of his mouth. He just falls over. The table gets knocked over. Everyone sees Darby's cards. That like he's got four kings. Abdul kneels down to take a look at what hand uh, Jotaro had, and it is the shittiest hand. It's a it's trash. It, it's There's not just, even a pair. Yeah, it's fucking garbage. There's nothing there. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, uh. And so the the binder opens up, and you know Joseph wakes up, Polnareff wakes up. A whole lot of people are coming out of comas all around the world. Oh yeah. It's nice that they were able to save everyone else as well as a bonus. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of those people got buried. Like, yeah, this. <laughs> are they gonna wake up? Are they gonna wake up in like have their bodies decomposed? Does that just mean they go to heaven then? Because Polar F wasn't breathing. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, and these are people that have been collected over the course of years. Years. Like, Darby has been beaten. Like he's 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 just gone crazy now he's just mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he's just mumbling random shit about hey let's play backgammon and all this other shit they don't even punch this dude they just leave him there no no he he is the second stand user to get the the rubber stamp retired uh show up in frame yep he's he might not be long for this world uh <laughs> yeah as as the rest of the heroes wander off having defeated one more of of these the set of nine assassin stands but not gotten any closer to to their journey they they never thought to double back and like are you sure none of you know about this building <laughs> yeah uh but but they are continuing on regardless as iggy finally contributes to to the episode by turning facing camera and barking in what i will interpret as a dog doing a rim shot it totally I- is <laughs> and, yeah and right before iggy does that joseph and polnareff break the fourth wall again saying i guess we can't be the heroes every episode <laughs> i mean it sure feels like it like it, it is it really is the polnareff show <laughs> yeah and yeah that that is the end of darby the gambler it's good it's a good one it's really good like yeah it's also like a really fun one just because it's one it's a jotaro fight and he doesn't get he doesn't throw a single punch Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We, we get to see what Jotaro can do with Star Platinum that isn't just punching. And it's just making people go crazy. <laughs> it's just it's just using a stand so fast that you gaslight them to thinking you're good at poker. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Anubis said. Like, uh, Jojo is Star Platinum's power, not the other way around, man. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's called a poker phase for a reason, and Jojo has the strongest one there is, so he cannot lose at poker. The end. Yep. The end. <laughs> the, this fight is good in the manga, too, for sure, but I mm-hmm. think this episode gains a whole lot from the animation, mm-hmm, just like mm-hmm. the, the direction of, of it and the, yeah. the extra tension that adds. Being able to control your timing from shot to shot and, and yeah. Yeah. Sound design, color design. This stand fight feels like what a good amount of stand fights in later parts have become you know not playing games a chance or anything but it's a lot it's a lot less of a, of a physical based fight no punches i mean th- this feels like araki's challenge to himself like how do mm. i make a non-fight fight how do i strip everything out but but retain the core and like 
I suppose there is a puzzle element, but even the puzzle is just how do I get under this guy's skin enough? Like, <laughs> yeah, wh- what is it he's not willing to lose? Like even the tiniest, uh, uh, most infinitesimal chance of losing and, and give him just the slightest, any sort of a non-zero uh, uh, risk of, of having to lose that. Yeah. Non-fight fights are good. Like, non-fight fights are rad. Yeah. And it's like not only in gambling series like this, but like sports, anime oh, yeah. sports are non-fight fights. It's the reason why I will like give sports anime a chance because so few of them are the the actual sport. <laughs> it's it's always so, it's always either cranked up to the extreme or oh, I can't remember the name of it. There was a I believe it was a basketball anime that was basic. It wasn't even basketball anymore. It was just like fucking like 4D chess mm-hmm, at a certain mm-hmm. point. And, and it was so because he were just mostly spending time in every athlete's brain on how they were going to do the craziest trick shot ever to <laughs> score to score a basket. <laughs> the, the, this episode is very Kaiji or um, very early manga Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Before they actually got the card game, and it was just Yugi going around doing crazy, insane games of chance with criminals and and fucking them up and sending them to actual hell afterwards. Usually, there's one time Yugi is like f- like doing some type of games of chance against like a peeping tom or something, and when the guy loses, his punishment is that his eyes get censored, like his eyes become like actual mosaics, like pixelated. <laughs> <laughs> and he can't see ever again. He's just like a freak of nature. It's it's wild. But yeah, this is also we point out that part two has a lot more stand users being actual characters, um, mm-hmm. and Darby just stands out a lot for me. Yeah, yeah, as yeah, one yeah. of the more memorable ones. You know, even though it's, he's basically just you know a gambler. Like, there's just something about him and the way he presents himself, and also like his character design. I don't know what's going on with the size of his face, but it makes him really memorable. <laughs> Well, he fell off the the riverboat casino uh, and and scraped his face up real bad on the side. Those are prosthetic titanium plates. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 (laughs) The stuff on the sides of his face, if I remember correctly, appear in a couple other different characters throughout JoJo as well. He just likes those weird blue metallic looking sideburns. (laughs) I I like the way Darby is characterized in the little things, like just the fact mm. that he has instant recall of the dates and times where where he he has some of his conquests says a lot about him and how seriously he takes this and how fastidious he is, yeah. and like the amount of hours a day you have to practice to be able to flip through a book and be like, <laughs> yes, I am on page five hundred six right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> The little bits they have throughout the the two episodes where you do see Darby actually nervous and like feeling mm-hmm. relief when he actually, you know, he drops the coin and the, the liquor doesn't go over the, the edge. That's a lot more fun and interesting than just like, I'm a perfect gambling god. I feel nothing when I gamble. <laughs> <laughs> he feels so much. That's what he does it for, man. Yeah, he he's still getting a huge thrill out of even the little fucking games of chance, you know, like that makes sense. And it's it's great. And I can't believe he's voiced by Cam Clark. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good choice. <laughs> That's the thing about, like, something like JoJo, where you have essentially a new cast every every episode, mm-hmm. or at, at, at least, you know, three new people every episode. Everybody's in it, eventually. Eventually, everybody's in it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's why, like, for a period of about 10 years... Every British actor was in Doctor Who because they went to a new yeah. fucking planet every fucking week. <laughs> Got to fill it with new people. Everybody's in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, man. A live action JoJo. <laughs> like, there is a lot live action JoJo. The the first couple episodes of part four got adapted into a live action movie a couple years ago by Takashi Miike. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I haven't watched it yet. But I do feel like you could probably take the format of JoJo and super make it work very easily in a live action format and still have it be basically the same. This fight uh, in particular, like the oh, stand, yeah. you, it, you, it's just a little like after effects, just slap it in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Especially if you're going for these more types of 
not fight fights where there's a mm-hmm. lot less action you have to do uh, with CG. And it's just like, sure, you've got like CG models for the stands when they pop up or something. Or even you want to go even cheaper. You got guys in suits that have been green screened. Like Gebs and Duel, pretty tricky. But like this fight and, and the last one, honestly, you just got to get a, a, a guy that looks like another guy, cast a good child <laughs> actor and give him the, the same haircut as your adult actor. You're, you're good to go. Yeah. I have tried to imagine before what the the Hollywood movie adaptation of JoJo would look like, because those always fuck everything up, basically. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> let's see. It would be based on Stardust Crusaders, but they would call yep. him Jonathan instead of Jotaro. <laughs> yes, yeah. All the Japanese names would be taken out, except for the, they would keep one character of the cast Japanese, and that would be like Kakyoin or something. Yeah, They'd have yeah. one Japanese cast member. Uh, it'd be Avdol. Just spin a wheel and throw everything off. Oh, yeah. Throw it all off. Because Avdol is, you know, the mystic foreigner. So he gets to be the one that's Japanese. Okay. Avdol is now the Japanese cast member. Make him cast him as a woman now so that you can check off the box of having. Oh, yeah. You got to get your twofer. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You, and yeah. And it's also the Asian girl with the streak of purple dyed in her hair. <laughs> uh, you get that out of the way. That's got to be there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Young Jonathan Cujo. Young Jonathan Kenneth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's, he's a teen delinquent. Like, he, he boosts cars. He, he's, oh he cuts God. school. But his, his grandpa is from Japan, actually. You just swap, swap him. Uh, okay. And, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. No, the, the, the one Japanese cast member is, is grandpa. Okay. Avdol is his friend from school, or maybe his friend from Juvie, not uh, uh, John, not Joseph's friend. Yeah. Uh, Polnareff is uh, set up at the end. P- Polnareff is like a credits reveal. <laughs> oh God, yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> and Kakuin is is uh, the 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 rich girl from across town that, that is a, <laughs> is into the bad boy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. She doesn't get a stand ever. Uh, we just we cut out Hierophant Green entirely. Yeah. Um, how else can we fuck this up? God, uh, when you no, said he, that... He, he gets inducted into like the ancient mystic orders, mystic order of stand users on oh, like no. his 17th birthday. Yes, okay, yeah. So now stand users are a secret society. Yes. Yep. And one of their own has gone rogue. Yeah, Dio. That's Dio. Oh my fucking God. So when you said that Jojo, who is now just Jonathan, Jonathan Kenneth, when you said that he works on cars, I immediately, in my mind's eye, saw the establishing shot of him in a very, like, overly color-corrected, hot summer day, super orange-looking. He's Mm -hmm. in, like, a scrapyard working on a shitty car. Uh And, uh you know, and you can't see his face because he's under the hood, and then he eventually looks up, and there he is. Jesus Christ, I can see it so well. Yeah, yeah. He's working on the car that he got as a present from his mom because we still have to save Holly from uh, the, the curse of Dio. But because he loves this car so much, that's why he's stealing cars because, you know, they don't make the parts anymore. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he already has his stand, but he doesn't know it yet. He was just born with it or whatever. But this time, instead of having Star Platinum, his stand is the car he's working on. (laughs) (laughs) He has Wheel of Fortune now and it sucks. But it makes the stand fights for him way easier because now you're just doing normal fat. You're just doing normal like car stunts. Yeah, you don't need yeah. to. You don't need to make a CG star platinum anymore. And the mm-hmm. car is just a made up like car brand that's like the platinum or whatever. Oh yes, yes. And the hood ornament is a star or something, yes. so he just calls it Star Platinum. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we fucked it all up. It's good now. We fucked it all up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god and his, his his grandfather from japan is in charge of the Speedwagon foundation yeah yeah i would say that he would still have hermit purple and it does kind of the the same thing but now now it's like presented as like mystic visions and smoke yeah yeah, yeah. it's gonna be more like actual fortune teller stuff yes, rather than the purple yes, yes, vines yes. so he won't be able to we- to web swing at all and he's gonna be like Whoever they cast as him, it's not going to be... No, like no, 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 big... no. It's not vines. It's like Buddhist prayer beads. 
Oh my god, yeah. And, and, they s- cast and he can really- grapple with those. <laughs> And he's like a really small Japanese man now. <laughs> like, and he doesn't fight at all, basically. <laughs> all the fights are just Jonathan Kenneth now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they save, and, and Polnareff, they save for the sequel. Yeah, totally. Uh, Abdul has a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just has a gun. Uh, and, oh, no, they, they call him Avi. Uh, <laughs> Avi, yeah. My, yeah. my friend from Juvie, Avi. <laughs> God damn it. Do they keep Iggy? They they might keep Iggy for, for marketability. Iggy is the girl's dog. Yeah. It's her um, purse dog. Yes. Oh, my God. It's a purse dog now. It's a comic relief thing every once in a while. Mm-hmm. For the, mm-hmm. Do they do that for the kids? Is this a PG-13 thing? You don't have to change Iggy much. Like, I don't think Iggy gets a stand, at least not in the first one. But, like, the dog doesn't like Jonathan and the dog farts a lot. Like, you don't have to change much. I think we have started to turn this movie into a mix of that Monster Trucks movie that I never saw. <laughs> and, and, and Dragon Ball uh, Evolution. <laughs> Dragon Ball Evolution, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I want this to happen now. I want to see how, what, how monstrous this Americanized JoJo movie would be. Is Dio a vampire? Is he still a vampire? Yeah, yeah, but he's okay. like a normal Hollywood vampire. He, he's okay. from the ancient order of stand users and then became a vampire. And I think any and all lore that happens before part three just does not exist. It's like hinted at. There's illusions. Like, okay. yeah. When they talk about what grandpa did in World War II, it's very confusing when he says he fought Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> but you're Japanese. Yeah. That's not the... I still fought the Nazis. I didn't like them very much. <laughs> Grandpa, you're super old. And then all the real deal, like, actual good JoJo references will just be set dressing in the background that no one notices. Like, you'll have Zeppeli's hat hung up in, in uh, Joseph's house or something like yes, that. And that'll yes, be it. Yes, yes, yes. He'll have one of the masks on display. Uh, mm-hmm, one of the stone mm-hmm. masks or something like that. Yeah, that's that's how you get, get that stuff in for the real fans who are super mad watching this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that is it for mm. uh, uh, this episode. We will be back next week with uh, the next sand fight. So two more episodes, and that will finish this quarter. So two weeks from now, you'll get our, our next uh, uh, guest episode. Ooh. Don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but I'm looking forward to that one quite a bit. So yes, uh, one more fight, two more episodes coming at you next week. But if you'd like something to listen to in the meantime, uh, I guested once again on Breaking Mayberry. Uh, you'll remember that is the the uh, Andy Griffith Show podcast uh, mm-hmm. uh, hosted by Dan, our first guest from from way back in uh, Phantom Blood days. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was on episode 87, Who Gave My Baby a Tribal Tat is the title. <laughs> uh <laughs> And we talk about a morally reprehensible episode of The Andy Griffith oh Show. Oh, my God. It starts with uh, Opie straight up asking his dad, Pa, how come sheriffs don't care about poor folks? And that sounds like a good basis for tackling issues like that. And then, and then it bungles that so hard you wish they never tried. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. We had a lot of fun, though, talking about child torture. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> All right. So I guess that is it for today. Uh, Mm -hmm. Please, please write your your local film executive. We have a pitch we'd like to bring to them. Netflix exclusive. Netflix exclusive. Get that Netflix money. Is there another Hemsworth out there we haven't found yet? I I want (laughs) to cast our our JoJo. (laughs) But here's my only rule for casting JoJo. His first name has to be Chris. (laughs) Just get, get it, Chris. I don't care what Chris, get it, Chris. Chris Hemsworth the second, the younger brother of Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. <laughs> we need the buffest 16-year-old. <laughs> so we need a 30-year-old man to play a 16-year-old. Yes. Alright, see you later, everybody. To be continued.